Hello, we are going to talk about part three, burning bright. This is the last part of Fahrenheit 451, and this week you'll actually finish it. So I just want to set you up to finish it, make sure you know where things are to get to that finish. Burning bright could be like something that you see in the distance and it leads you, but generally bright is good. If we think about all the imagery about fire, brightness is a good thing from fire. So keep that in mind that in the end, things are good, I guess. It doesn't seem like happy-go-lucky, but there are good things here. So last time we ended with them in front of Montag's house. Beatty talks to Montag, and this whole time is going to be really rough on him, but compares him to Icarus. It's another intelligent statement by Beatty showing just how much he knows how well read he is, but really it's getting at that Montag was arrogant, Montag wanted too much. He could already fly, he already had good things, he already had a good setup, but he asked too much, and now he's falling. This is his downfall, having to burn his own house. Some references to Clarice. Mildred runs out of the house. He wants to know if she's the one who put in the alarm. No response. She's just mumbling about her family. Her family, also known as her three walls that she stares at, interacts with. She's just like, oh my gosh, I have to leave my house with my family, my walls, my interaction. Doesn't even look at Montag. That depth of issues in their society, Mildred, is that representation of. There's some back and forth with Faber, because he's trying to communicate with Faber without giving it away. But not much he can do at this point. Not like he can actually really run. Go talk about having a hound. He's surrounded. He's got to play it out. Let's see. Talk about the fire being lovely. It's not quite mentioned here in the book, but in the novel, it comes to Montag. They always set the fires at night. You know, it's never necessarily a rush to go burn down a person's house or burn their books, but they always do it at night for the spectacle. And you can see that there are people watching. They're interested. It's something that will actually bring people outside of their houses. Here. More just Captain Beatty talking about fire. Tells him, or tells Montag, Beatty tells Montag that he is going to have to do everything himself. Because it's his house, his cleanup, he's got to burn it all down. He's going to do it with a flamethrower. And this is the start of where we see Beatty making some interesting choices. Because a flamethrower is a weapon. Spraying kerosene... Sparking it, not really as easy to weaponize, like you're going to spray someone down and then spark them. Flamethrower, it is a weapon. Maybe when you first saw this, it's just like it's more personal. You have to interact and burn each piece. But we're going to keep in mind what happens a few pages later and how Beatty is setting up for that to happen. So Montag is talking with Faber. We get some conversation that the hound is there. And as smart as Beatty is, he doesn't catch that this conversation is to the earpiece just yet. These two pages, so cool looking. Just that black of night and then the orange and red of the fire just like shows you why people would be so interested, why there'd be such a draw, why people would come out of their houses to look. And that it is so hot, people even have to cover their eyes. So Montag is burning without any problems. In the novel, he does talk about the different things he burns, and there's this, I guess it's kind of a joke, that he burns his bed, and it's like the most passion or fire that the bed has seen in years, this idea of there was no love between him and his wife. Beatty tells him he's arrested. You give a guy a weapon, make him burn his own house, ruin his life, and then it's like, okay, just come with us. The start of uh, maybe wondering how Beatty thinks this is going to play out. Montag wants to know who started it, who called in the alarm. Beatty acknowledges 
other people called it in. He let it ride, knew he could control it, but at that point he knew, I guess, everything. He knew how it was going to go. He knew that he could calm a fool when he walked into the firehouse, and he really, in that poker game earlier, just enjoyed messing with him, playing with him, seeing if Montag would crack references this idea of again he's a snob with a little bit of knowledge thinks he's this lord thinks he's this great person thinks he knows everything so gives him a weapon makes fun of him punches him in the face strikes him a blow punches him so he falls down montag's ability to communicate with favor comes out Beatty makes fun of him for it like oh i thought that you were actually like you know, more clever. Just this seashell. Messes with him. Makes fun of him. Not only makes fun of him, says they're going to go find favor, going to trace it, go after him. Montag turns the gun on Beatty. Beatty isn't like, hey, calm down, don't do it. Still messes with him. Calls him a snob. What are you going to quote these things? tells him how it is, just asks him to turn it over after making him burn his own house with this weapon, telling him that he's a snob, telling him he's arrogant, telling him he doesn't know enough, threatening his friend, asks a man with a weapon to just turn it over. The big move, Montag does not. He burns Beatty. And you can see it just consumes him, burns him down to almost looks like skeletal. And obviously there's no coming back from this. Montag can't go back and just be like, you know what? I regret this. He's burnt his commanding officer. It's done. He is going to have to move forward, find a different life at this point. Also, Montag will reflect and he'll realize why exactly this happened. Other two firemen are shocked. He hits them. They sit down and they just lay down. They're just knocked out. And the mecha mechanical hound shows up. We see its eyes through the smoke. This image here, this is important that he does burn it. He does render it useless, like melts it, but it's needle with like a numbing agent, procaine. Like if you think like similar to Novocaine, like when you go to the dentist does get him in the leg. So he destroys the hound, but his leg is going to be numb. The hound melting. But his leg feels numb and hollow. They'll use this metaphor of a shotgun blast going off, this explosion, this powerful blowback in his leg as he tries to hobble or run off. Goes back and finds there's a couple books left because he had hidden them in the bushes, Mildred did not find them all. So Mildred must have given up the books or incinerated them all because they have an incinerator in their wall in the kitchen. He still has a few left, so he can still execute his plan. He does realize Beatty wanted to die and recaps all those things we just talked about, giving someone a weapon, making fun of them, letting this go. Talked to some people in our Zoom meeting this past week why exactly Beatty would do this. Maybe he knew too much. Maybe he was sick of it. What were his other options? Just quit his job and give in? This way he goes out in, a, I guess, goes out in glory, burns out instead of just kind of pittering away. Uh, what were his other options? just read books and become an intellectual like Montag. In some ways it shows Montag is more bold or more daring for stepping up and being willing to do this. Whereas you might see Beatty as kind of giving in, giving up, kind of quitting on life, committing suicide and thinking he has no other options. Whereas Montag is gonna to try to find those options, follow those options. Montag did have another earpiece, so he can't communicate with favor, but he has this earpiece so that he can actually hear what's going on. Everything is all about him. 
They're looking for him. The government's looking for him. They're going to try to find him. And now the chase is on. He realizes, you know, I go talk to Favor. Favor's his one friend, his one ally, the one person who can help. He is going to have to cross the six-lane highway. His idea is if he can cross the highway, he'll be able to go actually clean up, you know, maybe make himself look a little bit more presentable. When he's there, he hears that the war has been declared. So all those fighter jets that have been going over, and it was kind of alluding to the chance of war, it has actually happened. As he crosses this stretch of road, it's this idea of he's in an arena, but when we think arena, we think sports, but here there are victims. And he has to still get to safety now, and this car is coming at him. And at first he thinks it's cops, he thinks someone's after him, but then he realizes that it's not just some kids car full of kids and they just wanted to kill him just out for fun that malicious view on life similar to how we heard about four before from clarice's school he even thinks maybe these are the kids who hit clarice and the only reason he lives is he falls down if he had been standing up and the car hit him, maybe just go flying over the top, but a car going that fast hits a bump in the road could be more dangerous for that car. So it actually saves him that he doesn't make it across cleanly. And he thinks about if he had remained upright, he might not be alive. Before he can make it to favors, he does stop at Black's house. Black is one of the other firemen. So he says good night, Mrs. Black, after planting the books in her house and calling it in. And it seems like we see some firemen from a different area rushing in. Like that's one of the salamanders. That's one of those fire trucks. And we get this reflection of the burn starting. So even though he can't execute his plan maybe as much as he would have, he does plant these books and at least call it in on one of the other firemen. He gets to Faber's house. Faber's thought he was dead because the other seashell that they could communicate on would have got burnt up when Captain Beatty died. Really here is just Montag giving him a recap. All these things have happened in a week. Him talking to Clarice, him going through that, that was two or three weeks because you'd get that count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. But in the past week, has been favor and planning and really everything after Clarice was gone. Here, they're trying to figure out what's going on, talk about the war is happening, you know, needs to keep running, needs to go on, needs to be somehow get away, thinks he might be dead by noon. Favor has the plan. Go for the river, follow it, go to the railroad, go out to the country. They don't watch the country the way they watch cities. You can actually make it across the country in rural areas on old train tracks. And there's actually a lot of people who used to teach in schools, professors out there. They don't care as long as you're not in the city. They make an, I, a plan that they could rendezvous in St. Louis. Faber says he's actually going out there to try to meet a printer for their idea of printing books, as previously talked about. Montag's got to get out of there, but they turn on the TV. He has a small TV, Faber does here in the wall, not like a whole wall viewer, but a small one. It talks about how they brought in another hound because Montag melted the first one. And now they have just quick time to make a plan because it talks all about everything it can smell out. So Montag tells him you got to burn everything. Burn bedspread, burn the chair sat in previously, wipe everything down like coronavirus on those doorknobs, get rid of it, hose off your sidewalks, get rid of all the scent, because this hound is going to come in, it's going to try to track him. He asked for dirty clothes and a valise, just another word for a suitcase, it's taped clothes so he can have this other scent, because he's trying to cover his. Also asked for whiskey, and at this point you're like, do you need to drink that bad? You'll see. Hopes it works, they say goodbye, and he's on the run. 
He's going to try to get away from the hound, going to try to cover his tracks. Hopefully Faber can cover it up. He's on the move. This is it. Last section coming up. 